welcome to Bricks and Toys. I'm Brandon, and today we are doing a off-schedule video build. And the reason that we are doing this today is that it's my older brother's birthday. So, happy birthday, bro! So, my brother is a European auto mechanic and car connoisseur. He mostly specializes in bringing old Volvo wagons back from the dead, but he also wishes one day to amass a nice sports car collection. And one of those cars is the Porsche 911. I'm not sure what year or which one exactly. So, getting into it. About two years ago, I saw the Porsche 911 Lego set while shopping and he was coming in from out of town and i sent him a picture of it and i said how would you like to build this he liked the idea but the issue is when you're coming in from out of town there's so much better things to do in las vegas and in this particular time he did come down we thrashed on some atvs just north of here and that was awesome. So, the set never happened. So, the idea, though, never left my brain. I still wanted to introduce him to Lego. Unlike me, he doesn't have really any of a Lego background. And I would like him to learn. So over the holiday season, because of my hobby, my mom, she wanted to do Lego sets for everybody. Unfortunately, the Lego Porsche 911 evaded us. It was completely sold out over the holiday season. So he got the Technic Lego Porsche instead. But like how all holidays go, time runs short, cooking, cleaning, doing things with the kids... We never got to build that set either. But as luck will have it, I was able to procure the Lego 911 Porsche set just in time to make this video. So, happy birthday, and now let's talk about this build. So, about the build. We're looking at set number 10295. Coming in at about an average for an automotive set, 1,458 pieces. From my knowledge, this is about a mid-70s to early 80s model of Porsche 911. Now, I do know for the actual car, they did run the air-cooled uh, 911 up until, I think, 1999. And... It was pretty much the same looking car, just different on the cosmetic side of things. But towards the end there, they did look pretty cool. One of the things I do find really interesting about the air-cooled Porsches is that they're running pretty much the same concept of engine as the VW Beetle. That being said, these cars are known for their racing pedigrees and keeping up with uh, bigger displacement vehicles out there on the track and on the street if you're one of those type of people that like to launch it from a stoplight. And I find that really interesting. I mean, I know that there is performance parts and ways to tune things, but just to think that from an engine that's air-cooled and that tiny, you can get that much power to weight ratio out of it is pretty awesome. The other aspect of that is, is I guess it does have to do with the with the idea that some of these were turbo, and I, as with anything, turbo does make all of the difference. So that's just about what I know about the actual car. I'm more of an American car guy. I don't really understand a lot of the European stuff unless I've actually bought into it and had to learn because it was you know sink or swim. So, about the actual build, what turned my eye on to this build was before I did this build, I did this build. Now, this is the Speed Champions 
of, I believe, the same car. And this was just found, sealed in box in one of my auctions that I do on the side. And I figured, you know, he he, let's just put it together. It'll be cute and we'll just throw it someplace and forget about it. Now I've learned that since then they have changed the speed champions to make them wider and they've done other things to make the series better and now this one's kind of special to me because you know I know you can't buy this one no more and if they were to make a new speed champions which they probably will it'll be bigger than this so this one's pretty cool and after doing this I just happened to walk by while shopping at Target one day and then this was staring at me and then that's when we get into the whole thing about me messaging my brother and saying hey what about it unfortunately like i said before never could happen but it is going to happen today which is awesome so without further ado i just want to mention one more thing before i go on this is a two-in-one kit so you can go with the turbo or you can go with the targa model of things i do notice that off the top the targa does not have the spoiler and it's got a whole different rear glass design as well as roof design again that's because it is a targa and with the targa version it does have either a sticker or a printed piece that says targa where with the turbo version, it does have the spoiler. It has the complete roof. And that printed piece or sticker piece, I'm not sure yet, does say turbo. So I will have to choose between one of these. And I'm going to keep that a surprise. Because I love to give surprises and nothing away. I do know that the Target Top cars, I'm not sure if it was a 911 or another series... They were known in this time for people to actually completely remove what was left of the roof and turn those into a convertible, which pretty much nowadays has destroyed these cars. Just a little fun fact. So if you ever see one of these that's a convertible, it was likely a target top before that. And I do know another fun fact I just thought of is... One of these in mint condition could cost you as low as 50000 on up. It just depends on con condition. So I do think the $169 price tag at Lego, just for a model, is a lot better than 50 or more thousand for an actual car. <laughs> because, let's just be honest, both are going to set as a collector's piece somewhere in your house, whether it's the garage or up on the shelf. Just a little fun thing. So let's cut this box open. Ever since the Land Speeder video, I never have taken my knife too far from me. I have learned my lesson. It's a little funny on that. There we go. Now let's move my little guy over here. I did read somewhere that they changed the stud count of these from six, I think. It looks like six down to eight, and that's where the size difference comes in. Just random. And I just broke it. Anyway, let's do the dump. Okay. That was super contained. So let's just go through the bags really quick, see what we got. So we got a 10 so far, we got a 9, 7, 8, 4, 3, 4, 5, Six, seven, eight, nine, randos, two, and five. 
So we are looking at 10 bags total. One of the bags do have a side piece of pieces. So most of everything is just little unmarked bags inside of the bags. So I don't really count those as extra. So 10 with a little extra. Now we do have one bag of unmarked pieces. This just looks like the front and back glass. Pretty cool. One little cool thing I did notice right off the rip is this is the same windshield that they use in the Ecto-1 Ghostbusters. And Lego tires, well we all know, and we're probably tired, here we go with the puns again, of hearing that they're all the same. I would like to see with these models, like the option for like custom wheels and maybe lower profile tires, but I do know it is a lot of money in manufacturing and it's asking a lot of Lego. So here we go, first thing right off the book, Targa Turbo, so that's the two in one, again, it's going to be a surprise, just like this video, to my brother, Porsche on the back. Let's just go over, starting off with pieces and all of that goodness. It's, oh boy. We're looking at about 263 build pages. And the fun thing about this is every time it resets, I'm just going to guess that it resets the number two. Actually, yeah. So what this book is actually doing, which is a unique uh, thing I've never noticed before, is it's actually, as the bags go on at a certain point, it just recounts the steps. So it goes up to, let's see. So we're at that. Right here. So it gets up to bags eight and nine of where you can choose the turbocharged version of the car and it resets. So the first 180 pages takes you to 305 steps. And then at that particular point, you have a car with no wheels, no rear fenders and no trunk, I mean, rear hood and roof. The reason is, is the turbo has flared rear fenders and it also has a spoiler and it has the full roof. Where the Targa, I'm just noticing because of that, it does not have the flared rear fenders. And as we already know, it didn't have the roof. So pretty unique on that. And there is a lot of Porsche stuff in this book. I will definitely be looking forward to reading about all of this. They're just such beautiful cars. I mean, look at this one in, in silver right here. I'm not sure. This does look like one of the later ones. I'm not exactly sure. But isn't that just beautiful? I can see why my brother wants one of these. Or somewhere a Porsche. So, with that being said, let's cut to the time lapse and we'll do a quick reveal video and then we'll come back and we'll talk about what it was like and what I feel. See you soon.
there we have it. The Porsche 911 Turbo. Not the Targa, but the Turbo. The Turbo model, it just has a better look to it. I like the styling of the roof a lot more than the Targa model. I like the wheels. I like the rear, like, whale tail spoiler. Um, I just like all those things in this build. And most importantly, the person that I'm dedicating this build to today for their birthday is a huge turbo fan. He collects Volvo wagons that are turbo and he likes to tune them and tweak them and make them as fast as he can. And I used to own one that had a little bit of a touch of his. And that car was one of the most fun cars that I've ever owned. And I miss it every day. So I can't imagine what it would actually be like to actually own a performance car that is turbocharged instead of a mom wagon that's got a tune on it and a turbocharger. So, about the build. One thing I didn't notice when I was going through the build is when you select turbo from Targa, you actually have a different look to the engine. They actually compensate for the turbo in the car. So, I thought that was really cool that they put that in as a detail. Props to Lego on that one. Um, obviously, it does have the wheel tail spoiler instead of just where it slopes all the way down. So that I found really cool. Now, it did come with, I think, three choices of license plates. It had European style, it had Chinese style, and then it had American style. I clearly went with the European style since this is a German car. It only makes sense to me. So, the unfortunate downside of going turbo versus Targa is the fact that the roof is stationary. It does not r remove. So, unlike with the Targa, you would be able to remove the roof and kind of play it inside with your fingers a little bit easier. Just a thought. Now, opening up the, the frunk, it does have a nice open frunk. Thought that was really cool. And the doors, they have good support. Now, that's, that, that is one of the things I did notice. I, I have noticed in newer automotive builds, such as um, the Camaro and the, well, not really the DeLorean, they open Gullwing. But there's a mechanism that I thought was to make the, them close softer. But I actually believe it's to make them not open up like, because if your Porsche is like, I mean, I get it, McLarens have the billionaire doors and all that, but I think this is just hoop de busted if you're at Porsche's opening the door that much. I mean, you got some bigger issues there. You can't even make a new classification to make that cool. But, um, so that is a little quirk I did find. A couple of little other quirks I did find is some of the pieces are really fragile. So when I will be moving this around my house, I will have to be careful with it. It does break easily. But I did find the build super engaging. Surprisingly, I did eat this build within, I want to say, four hours. I got started and I just could not stop. Actually more like six hours, but I did take about an hour and a half break to make dinner. So once I got started, it, it just popped together super easy and I just couldn't stop until you're looking at this product. Um, one final really cool detail I did want to point out is, and I didn't notice it when I did the introduction video, but there's no stickers. There's no stickers for the license plate. There's no stickers for the emblems. There's no stickers. It's printed. So the Porsche badge is printed. The Targa badge is printed. And of course the speedometer and gauges are printed. But I found that really cool. 
So that wraps it up for the Porsche 911 build. Again, it is $169.99 and it is labeled at the store as a hard to find build. So if you are interested in doing this, I suggest try to get a hold of one and do it. You will have a lot of fun. Like I said, once I started clicking pieces, I couldn't stop. And just uh, one last happy birthday to you, bro. I hope you're watching and you see this. I'm for sure I'll get a message if you do. And to the rest of everybody else, I really hope you did enjoy this video. I do ask for you to like and subscribe. And if you are liking the channel and the direction it's going, I say recommend this channel to some of your friends. Um, all of those things could really help out the channel and help me grow and become bigger. I would appreciate any help. And with that... I really hope that you all have a good one. My name is Brandon, and this has been the Porsche 911 build.